Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's On the Level Leadership. And for those who are new here, my name is Tammy and I'm a career and leadership coach slash consultant. So this week is going to be a little more personal for me. And I wanted to share it with you because I think that if you're wondering whether coaching is for you, I want you to really listen to how coaching has changed my life. So this week we're going to get a little more personal and uh, I really wanted to share the power of coaching and how it affected my life and maybe this will help you figure out whether it's something that you're interested in doing. You know, for those of you who don't know me personally, um, you know, I was raised by fairly dysfunctional people who came from very dysfunctional families and they did the best they could with what they had. And I've learned to understand and, and accept that. But when I was younger, you know, I was always perplexed by my father's very controlling and narcissistic behaviors. And it, it impacted me in ways where I became extremely aggressive. I uh, always questioned myself and my sanity because he was really good at gaslighting us and making us think like we were crazy. And I spent my, my entire adulthood sort of defending myself against others and being very, uh, you know, defensive and putting walls around myself. And so sometime around, um, I don't know, three or four years after having had children and having gone through postpartum depression, I realized that I had to really do some work on myself in order for me to live the life that I felt like I deserved to live, which was one of joy and of satisfaction. I started this journey back in 2013 when I started doing my master's in leadership at Royal Roads University. And through that process, I started to break down those walls thanks to a phenomenal cohort of people that I was with uh, who really helped to identify some of my defense mechanisms through group coaching styled course content that we were taking together. And I remember my first practicum with these people and thinking, God, this feels like a big, you know, therapy session with people crying and exposing themselves. And I just was unable to do that and could not figure out what the hell was going on with this group of people that I was with at Royal Roads. But what was really phenomenal about that experience, and it was sort of my first leaning into a group sort of coaching style of experience was that our professors were really good about getting us to ask open-ended questions and to silently wait for the responses. We used to use the uh, talking circle, something a First Nations groups often do where they have a feather and they pass the feather along and it's he who holds the feather who gets to talk and no one else gets to say anything. And so we would do that and it would give you an opportunity to say everything you wanted to say while you held the, the feather and when you were done, you would pass it along to someone else. Anyway, it was sort of my first exposure to the concept of well-being, of de digging deep inside, because in order for us to really be great leaders, we have to understand how we personally show up in the world. And at that time, I was showing up as somebody who was closed-minded, closed to the world, very defensive, and not very enabling. So quite frankly, I while I had leadership potential, I wasn't really expressing that very, very well. And it was showing up in my performance reviews because I was too, I had too many defense mechanisms that I was activating. So long story short, fast forward to 2019, I decided, you know what, I want to start a leadership practice, a leadership business, because I really want to help promote positive leadership because I had learned from 2013 to 2019 how to implement principles like the leadership challenge principles, for example, in organizations. I had seen the tangible effects in my organizations. I had seen, you know, the rates of uh, empathy increase in my organization. I had taken an all male um, group of employees that had only been led by men uh, to a place where they were active and they were participative and organizational uh, cultural type behaviors or sorry, activities. And I had really um, exercised really great leadership and saw the positive benefits. So I said, I want to follow this passion. So I started to kind of delve into that. But never once did I consider getting a coach. I just thought, oh, I'll just take a course. I'll do another certification. I'll, you know, apply another principle. I'll read another book. And Although that was all very positive and it did a great job, it wasn't until I really started to invest in myself is in coaching that I really started to see massive shifts in my mindset and in my in my life. I'm sorry for the long-winded uh, sort of intro to this, but I really wanted to get 
to the reason why I came to coaching was because I started getting to the point where I was exhausted in what I was trying to do to, to kind of fix things or to get myself to a point where I could actually take the, the leap and become an entrepreneur, for example. So that was my, my goal was to be my own boss, to leave my government job, although it's been a wonderful career and I've enjoyed the people I've worked with. The reality is, is I always wanted to be my own um, boss and chart my own course in life. And, and I've also just frankly wanted to help other people be more confident as leaders, in particular women who we are, who you know, who were raised in the in the seventies and the eighties, who really questioned themselves on a regular basis because we weren't raised to be leaders; we were raised to be followers and nurturers. And I feel like sometimes um, we think that they're ex mutually exclusive, but they're really not. And so it's a passion of mine to help you be the best you you can be, right? And so I wanted to really lean into that, but I knew that I had to do work on myself in order for that to happen. In comes my coach who happened to be a former colleague of mine and I have a link down below to her uh, website if you're interested in working with her because she's certainly helped me out uh, and I'm obviously always open for business. So if you ever want to talk to me, you can. There's a link down below for that as well. But I just wanted to share my experience with my coach Gina because, you know, we were, I would consider her a friend prior to um, her leaving the civil service a few years ago. And always thought that, uh, always saw her sort of as a friend and mentor in my workplace. And so it was kind of a natural fit to work with her as a coach. I had um, started taking courses myself towards becoming an executive coach. And so I understood the value in my head, but I had not actually invested in myself yet to kind of see the, the uh, true value of coaching in my personal life. So... Um, back in May of uh, 2021, I decided, you know what, I'm going to invest in my own coach to get myself to the next level because I was really seriously thinking about leaving my government job to pursue this as the, my next step or the next chapter in my career life. And um, But I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of mindset concerns, a lot of confidence problems. And so I thought, well, if I work with a coach, maybe she can help me transition. And because she's done this before, she'll know what I'm going through. And so I know that she'll relate to what I have to say and will be able to mentor me as well as coach me through the process if need be. So while there were a ton of different side benefits to having a coach in my life, there were three that I think really helped push me uh, to this next phase of life that I'm I'm jumping into at this at this point in the game. The the first is mindset. So um, you know, thinking about becoming an executive coach, I, I started to really have struggled with imposter syndrome and whether I was actually good enough to do that job. I was worried that my clients would not get the kind of support or the kind of coaching that they needed. And what I really loved about working with Gina was the focus on strengths, which is what coaching is about. The focus on my strengths and looking at how I applied my strengths in the past and how I've coached people before and how the, I'm just a natural fit for this because of the work that I did previous to, to becoming a coach officially on paper um, helped to really reframe some of my thinking about whether I could do this work. And I started to actually believe, wait a minute, this is possible for me. I can do this, right? And so it it sort of my mindset started to change to is this my truth or is this my fear speaking? And I think one of the things that coaches are really good at is is figuring out the words that you keep repeating or the the different things that just keep coming up for you. They will pick on it and say, well, hold on a second. I'm hearing this from you. What is, what's coming up for you that you're saying this word or you're saying this phrase on a regular basis? And you dive deep into that issue. So you can kind of get to the root of why you're thinking a certain way and challenging that assumption. Like, is that your truth? Is that really what your sage self or your inner self would tell you? And so working with her as a coach and working in a group coaching environment, because there was also a group component to this coaching um, investment that I took on really helped to modify the mindset. Now, does it, is it a switch? No. Is it something that I'm still struggling with? For sure. But what makes, what's really good about this is it makes me relatable. It makes, 
it makes me relatable. If you are working with me, know that I've been down this path before. I know what it is to have imposter syndrome. I know what it is to feel fear. I know what it is to have to learn to reframe my thinking because I'm doing it daily because it's a human condition, right? Especially when you come from from traumatic backgrounds or you've experienced, um, you know, kind of childhood that maybe wasn't the best or maybe the happiest. We have all these cobwebs in our head that get in the way of our success, right? And so that you have to kind of cut the cobweb little by little eventually, and it starts to like have less of a hold on you, right? So that's, for me, was probably one of the biggest things was learning to really look uh, inside for, for those things, which means that I, the second thing, which is it helped me build my character even further. So You know, we often think of character building as things that don't kill us will make us stronger, but sometimes it's learning about empathy or learning to be compassionate to yourself and to others. Maybe it's about learning to listen to your sage rather than your critic. So that part of my uh, building of character really started to emerge in a much more prolific way when I started working with my coach. And, you know, the last thing I'm going to say that really helped me is she really uh, challenged me to take action. And it's not that she, as an accountability coach, she doesn't check in on me. She's not micromanaging my action steps. I'm planning my action steps for myself and keeping myself accountable. But at the end of the day, you know, she helps me to, by reframing some thinking, by challenging my thought processes, can help me to really, okay, well, maybe that's an action plan I can take on. That's a reasonable piece. And at times she's taken off her coaching hat, put on her mentorship hat and said, okay, as a mentor, here's what I recommend you do and help sort of put me on a different path, which helped me build confidence. An example of this is I was kind of struggling with the next steps and she's like, you know what? Just work your network work your network, girl. If you want to look at landing your contract or under building relationships or reframing potentially where you might be able to find work in the future, like contact your network because they know you, they understand you, they have faith in you, they have confidence in you, they, they, they have worked with you before, they know how competent you are. So work, you know, contact your network and speak to them. And as as I started to do that, I started to build confidence that, you know what, maybe I can do this, right? So again, mindset change, building character and taking action because ultimately taking action is where you're going to see your life change. I've said this a number of times on this channel is that if you want to change, you have to change. And um, that is not an easy thing to do. I still wake up sometimes quite anxious about this this shift from employee to um, to entrepreneur as I move out of my government job in a few weeks time and I move into being my own boss. That is an extremely scary place to be. But at the end of the day, I know deep down inside, my sage knows that's the right thing for me because uh, when I think about being my own boss, it doesn't stress me out as much as I know that there's a lot of work behind it. Again, very personal experience this week, but I hope you got something out of it because really if you're on the fence about uh, investing, and and by the way, I want to talk a little bit about the price of coaching. Return on uh, expectation for coaching can be quite high. Uh, and I mean, it's very difficult to calculate return on investment per se with coaching because there's a lot of intangibles that don't have necessarily a financial metrics behind it. However, the return on expectation with increased productivity, um, decreased uh, absenteeism, uh, decreased turnover in an organization, for example, increased change in your life, a feeling of positivity, a feeling of satisfaction, those kinds of things are tangible things that you can achieve through coaching. So when a coach provides you their, their, their pricing model, remember that coaches don't charge by the hour and they don't do one sessions. Usually the most coaches that I know offer packages. And the reason for that is because change doesn't happen in a day. So equate this to going to the gym, right? If you're working out, um, one workout at the gym does not make you fit. One workout at the gym will not give you the six packs you're, you're looking for. You need to go consistently on a regular basis to see those positive effects. It's the same with coaching. If you want to make a big change in your life, 
you cannot expect to go from A to B overnight without some serious repercussions, right? You're going to have to take some tangible steps along the way. And the only way to build those confidence muscles or to build that mindset shift or to build that character is through a relationship over time where the, where you dive deep with your coach, where they challenge your assumptions, where they ask you to take action and to, and where they maybe help hold you accountable if that's the relationship you've co-created together. So when a coach gives you their, their pricing, don't be too shocked by that and look at it as an investment in yourself. So I'll give you an example. The average uh, personal life coach will charge, let's say for four to six months, could charge anywhere from two to $6,000. And, you know, if you look at uh, a leadership and executive coach, those numbers can double. So, it, you know, it could be anywhere from five to $10,000 for a six month contract per person. But depending on the type of coaching, depending on what you need, depending on the time that you require, depending on the assessments that are being done, depending on the investment the coach is going to have to make in you, will determine the package price at that coach and also local rates, right? Like where you live will determine also what the value of that coach uh, will be in terms of what the market value or the market acceptability of that coaching um, package could be. And if your coach is certified or uncertified, that can make a difference in, in pricing as well. Are they super in demand or not in demand? Are they new or have they been in business for 10 years? All of these things affect the pricing. So, but I want you to really look at coaching as an investment. You don't think twice about taking a course and paying $1,000 for this course. You don't think twice about that. You don't think twice about paying for a personal trainer. And, you know, that you'll, if you'll notice, most gyms will require you to commit to a minimum amount of sessions, like 10 sessions or what have you, because they know if you only go once, you're not going to get successful. But if you go 10 times or 20 times, you'll achieve further success. But if you do that, you know, well, they charge by the hour, but still you're going to be investing two and three and $4,000 potentially into personal training for that period of time. So again, Look at it as an investment in you so that you can achieve either the joy, the satisfaction, the new job, the promotion, the shift in career, whatever it is you're looking to do. And then look at the benefits of making those changes. Because again, you may be putting out a few thousand dollars for a coach, but think about the long-term effects of that. If that coach successfully is able to actually move you to the next stage, think about the benefits of what that's going to feel like and look like for you. Like if you change jobs and you feel more fulfilled, is there a price tag attached to that? That's the question. So for me, when I decided to pay Gina, it was a big ticket dollar amount. Um, and I thought, you know what? It's a large amount of money, but one, this is going to hold me accountable because I'm going to get every penny out of her as I, that I can. <laughs> Two, um, I'm making a commitment to me so that I can live my best life. And that's what this is, the cost of this is for me. Um, and three, although it was a big ticket amount and I did have to have a conversation with my partner on this, the reality was this is something I really wanted. So I made room for it in our budget. And so I think it's really just about figuring that out. And then if you don't have the money for it, talk to your coach, you know, maybe there's something that you guys can work out. But the reality is, is to me, it was an investment in me. It was super powerful. It's been really powerful. And I'm so, so glad I, I went down this path. I don't think that I would be where I am today without my coach, frankly. I don't think that I would be making the big shift from leave, like to leaving my government job after almost 20 years is not something that I would do on my own. I, I could not have done this on my own. My husband's great. He's a big supporter, but it I would not have been able to really take this measured step forward without having somebody in my forum who could support me and who could be a cheerleader and who could encourage me and also challenge me to really change my mindset and take action. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this video. And again, there's links down below for both Gina's site and also my own, should you be interested in having a coaching call with either of us. And I really do appreciate you being here. Feel free to subscribe if that's something you're interested in. I do cover both leadership and coaching content on this channel. And I really am looking forward to seeing you next week. Take care. Have a great week, folks. Bye.